Hey, we're back with a commit podcast. When this kind of happens, we're going to try to jump on the same day and get you why should you care that elite JUCO defense tackle Perion Winfrey has committed to the University of Oklahoma. And for that, I am teeing up the homie Brandon Drum. Brandon, what's up? And tell me what you think about all of this, dude. I mean, why should they care? They've only griped about it for, what, the past four years. We're not getting any top-tier defenders in the interior defensive line. Oh, my gosh. The fans have griped about it for a long time, right? Am I right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. That, that's why they should care. They got the number one junior college defensive tackle that Alabama offered, Florida State, Georgia, Auburn. I mean, you name it, he had an offer from it, and there's good reason why. All you have to do is go watch his film, and it will blow your mind. He looks apart. He's exactly what you want. He's Ever since Neville Gallimore got on campus, everybody's been wanting another Neville Gallimore. And it hasn't happened. It has now. As long as he sticks and he uh, signs, it's all good on December 22nd. I'm going to push back on one point you made. This is not a Neville Gallimore. Uh, in that, not that he's not as talented, but he's junior college. I think when we use yeah, that, yeah, he's not as freakish. Yeah, well, no, but okay. also getting a guy yeah. out of high school and getting True. potentially three uh, years out of a kid, four years out of a kid, as opposed to two, because yeah. that's 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 why I'm pushing back. And I think it is a, a big enough deal to just do more than say, um, you know, cursory. Hey, this guy ain't Neville Gallimore. I I think the years matter. I, that's all. Okay, that that's fair. That's fair on the years. Um, the as far as in, he probably isn't going to run a four seven like Neville. Neville is he has Tommy Harris type potential. Athletic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that is something to watch this year. Um, I know we keep harping on that, and everybody wants to say, "I'll see it when I believe it." Well, folks, I think everybody's been you kind of saw it during the spring game. So um, he was he was wreaking havoc. He was doing his thing. Um, it's it's. I think this is what we're going to start seeing from this recruiting. I think people are going to start noticing that it's different. The play, the the recruits, and I don't. This isn't a knock on Mike Sue because Mike Sue is a really good recruiter. I mean, a very good recruiter, and I respect him more than anything. But I think Alex Grinch's name just kind of goes places because of what he's done with with lesser talent at the defensive tackle position, and he can go and put what he did at Washington State, and, and a kid with Perion Winfrey's talent can go, whoa, if he's doing that, I can do something way better. And that that's going to be enticing, especially since you know you can come in and almost start from the get-go. So don't be shocked if 2021, because I've, I've got something, uh, Tunamis Adelaide loves Oklahoma, loves Oklahoma. Hey, um, hey, Tunamis is my Dude, like and, and that I, dude, and, and he's he a ball. monster. <laughs> he's an absolute he monster. monster. Yes. So don't 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 think this is just going to be a one hit wonder. Dude, well, to not. to me, I, says twenty twenty one. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I, I let him with twenty twenty. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, I was just saying it's not twenty twenty. Isn't going to be the end of this? I think it's going to be a trend from here on out. You're going to see Oklahoma get better on the interior. I think you're going to see them recruit better overall on the defensive side of the ball. You see what they're doing on, at the defensive back position. Now, mind you, those guys are taking visits. But if you go after these top-tier guys, and that's the thing. People are like, well, our other guys didn't do it. The other guys didn't have offers like this. And those guys that had big-time offers are going to take visits. That's just part of the deal. And you have to do it. Alabama's been able to manage it. Clemson's been able to manage it. These dudes taking other visits. Oklahoma is in that, that kind of talk. They should be able to manage it too. It's how fans kind of react to it all. Um, I, and I think, you know, when I put up that Dante Manning thing on the board today, it, people kind of took it as, you know what, we're kind of getting used to the fact that these top tier kids are going to take visits. Uh, they've taken visits though. I mean, yeah, that has been, been my taken. issue. It's not like they stopped. Well, no. And I was going to say that, and it's, they took visits in 2016, 2017, 2018 and 2019. If for no other reason then the offense was humming enough to entice you to at least give it a cursory glance. I mean, yeah. before stuff broke down, Brian Breeze was going to come out, or Breezy, excuse me, was going to come out here yeah. to take a look 
Now, I mean, was he going to commit to Oklahoma? Probably not. No, he was going to do what he, what he did, which is commit to Clemson, which is where they have turned and it into a defensive you? line I mean, factory. Like, it's like quarterbacks. It's like quarterbacks at Oklahoma. Well, I mean, but I, I'm making the point to say, if you have a closer on the defensive side, cool. You had that in Mike Stoops. But getting guys to buy into what it could be is not something that Mike Stoops could sell. And I think yeah. that's also a really big deal when we're talking about Perry and Winfrey. He hasn't actually seen the defense. He's heard what it could be. He's probably seen diagrams of what it could be and where he could fit into it. And he's seen what Grinch's defense looked like at Washington State. But he sold, He was sold, no other way to put it, he was sold a dream. Now, yeah. to play devil's advocate here, and I need to because it's a commit. It's a verbal commitment. It's not yeah, a signing. But even a signing, signing. Yeah, with exactly. the transfer portal, everything is changeable. I'm saying this right now so we get this all out in front. If the defense sucks through the first yeah. half of the season, there's no guarantee that this dude will de doesn't decommit and start looking around. Now, I think it bodes well that this was the only visit that he scheduled when he could take visits, and he didn't schedule any after. And he had told you straight up, look, if this yeah. goes well, boomer. So it went well, and we got the boomer. Now, can you hold him? And the only way it seems that you could hold him is by putting a competent – defense on the field throughout the season yeah and i look i don't i'm not gonna sunshine pump and say that i expect oklahoma to be a world beater but i think if, if they show improvement they have something to sell that is what you're looking for is are they better than years past are there are they top 70 you know, something to that extent. Is that great? No, that's not what you want. It probably won't win you a national title at top 70. But it does sell the fact that these guys are improving and it's going to continue to improve each and every year. The more talent they get on campus, the more they recruit to their, you know, scheme specific for the positions, it's going to get better. And you're likely going to see improvement in that. That's going to be easier for the coaches to to throw that out there. Hey, they were 129 last year. They're 70, so we jumped them up 59 spots. You can't really argue that they're going to make that. That's an easy. That's an easy selling point. I mean, at that when you get to that, and you're going to be playing Oklahoma, so you're going to you know you're going to be competing for a national title. It's easy to tell you uh, to sell you that you're going to have wings by the time you know you turn 38. If you're 31, I mean, I, I just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm playing advocate here because I'm thinking through all the ways in which things can go badly because that's part of the job. Um, oh and, yeah, no, that's why I don't think it's. That's why I'm saying I don't think they're going to be world beaters or anything this year. I just right, but but if they do make a, a a capable improvement, like a, a remarked, a marked, not remarkable, yeah, but a marked improvement. Spots. That's what I'm saying. You I, I'm, but, but that, yeah. here's the thing, though, dude, and this gets back to what is the game about, and what are you recruiting for? And that is, 70 doesn't win you a national championship. No. And and that's that's where I'm getting at. Like, I cool, mean, yeah, you get to keep a 2020 of... defensive tackle in the boat, but if, if, if you end up just outside the college football playoff, are you going to feel good about Perry and Winfrey? And I know that we're doing a Perry and Winfrey commit podcast, but look... I look at the rankings, and I've started to try to talk myself out of thinking about the rankings because I think about the rankings in terms of winning championships. And, and by championships, I mean college football playoff championships, not Big 12 championships. We know Oklahoma can do that with what you just described, a god-awful defense. <laughs> you know, so I mean, but is that what, what it's going to be? Is that what it should be at Oklahoma? No, I think we would all agree about that. So I wonder how many of the kiddos, when you're talking about, hey, we put guys in the league, well, cool. Now, you got a guy committed to the defense based on a dream who knows quite literally you ain't putting no defensive tackles in the league this year. I mean, I, I mean, not in the draft. We're going to talk about Imani Bledsoe. Oh, you're, cool. talking about, you're talking about what, this past draft? Yeah. Oh, I was about to say, yeah, Neville Gallimore's going to get drafted. But, yeah. Well, no, I, I uh, I'm not certain anymore. Like, after the way no, that I, I saw – I think Neville get drafted. Look. Well, I mean, it's not that's, – that's not to say that I'm, – I'm saying – if he gets drafted, are you going to tell me confidently seven, that Neville Gallimore is going to go in the top three rounds if you play like you played last year? Oh, I, I mean, that's because he was 
taking on blockers and not shooting gas. He's also going to be five years in, so he's going to be older. And this is the other thing that I really want people to start thinking about. We make we look at lists particularly often in, in society, and one of the lists that comes up for NFL fans is the top players under twenty five. Zeke Elliott, Amon, uh, um, Amari Cooper turns twenty five this month. You know, Pat Mahomes, uh, Jalen, I think Jalen Ramsey. I got to check on that, but like Neville Gallimore is going to come out and be twenty three as a rookie. I think he's, be tw- I think he's, he's only twenty one right now, right? I thought he's twenty. I thought he was going to be twenty three. I thought he's twenty two. No, I think now. he's twenty one right now. Okay, so. And that's the other part about it. So, like, yeah. as a red shirt, you have three years to, to, to roll out twenty five and under. So that's not bad. So red shirt senior, having played four years to four to play five. Mm-hmm. I'm saying he's going to have to have a really outstanding year because you can't draft Neville Gallimore on upside. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that if he had a year like he did last year. Could you say he's going to get drafted? Yeah, because he plays defensive tackle. But now you got to look at him against other guys coming out a year younger, two years younger. Uh, I'll say this. I'll say this. And I know this is I, – I have full faith on what they're going to do with the defensive line this year. I don't know what it is, why it is, but I have an inkling that it's going to be really a lot better than what we've seen. And for no other reason, it's one gap, and I can't – because I can't – they didn't ever have the players to do ever since Jordan Phillips left to, to do a two gap, two gap guy on the inside. They had to run a zero. I mean, that, this wasn't going to happen. Um, you could have done not, it. You didn't. You didn't have. You didn't have the horses because you didn't. Because you went and you got all these tweeners like that. Exactly. I mean, that yeah. Was, they kept. They kept going after. Everybody kept asking, "Why are they going after tweeners? Why are they going after tweeners?" And now you're starting to see the tweeners are going to fit perfectly with Grinch, but they did not fit at all with what Mike Stoops. Was well. Doing. We're going to test that because Ryan Jones is a tweener. No, that's what well, I mean. He was a safety when he first got here. It, we yeah. Know. Why does he before that? Um, uh, we're but, having, but I guess we're, uh, Ken, is Kenneth Murray I, Jr. a tweener? Kenneth Murray Jr.? No, he was a linebacker. Uh, well, I mean, tweener between outside backer and Mike. Or outside backer and inside backer. I guess so, yeah. I, right. I don't know. Is yeah, Jalen, is kind of, not Jalen Redmond, uh, is Ronnie Perkins a tweener? Red- Perkins? Yeah. No, nah, he's a, he's a, he's a defense he's a defensive end. Yeah, but is that a jack? Or is that nah, is that a, the Kenneth Mann strong side defensive end? Like 270, 280. Right. So like that's what I'm getting at. And when I when I talk when I'm when I'm really digging down into the minutia of this and I root for all the kiddos. I also am realistic about what you can and can't do after 2 3 years at Oklahoma. You know, like I love the the true freshmen because they haven't done anything yet, and that means that they get to make up the book. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not telling you what Marcus Hicks is gonna do, what Corey Roberson is gonna do, what Joseph Wette, David Ngwebu, any of those guys, Woody Washington, Jane yeah. Davis. We know what they what they could project for. Yeah, there's a reason why. But we're not gonna project for that kid to to absolutely suck. I mean, that's no. that's the thing. Whereas, if you're looking at, I, I'm high on Kenneth Murray Jr. Because of his fresh, true freshman year and because of his sophomore year. Mm-hmm. I have more faith that Kenneth Murray Jr. gets drafted ahead of Neville Gallimore next year than Neville Gallimore gets drafted ahead of Kenneth Murray Jr. Think about that for a second. Think about what I just said. I am, and I don't agree. But you yeah. think that Neville Gallimore goes before Kenneth Murray Jr. even as Kenneth Murray Jr. was a 2020 first-round mock draft pick? The reason why is because I have, I, I have, just because I have a feeling that Neville's going to have a big year. Yeah, but I'm not saying I'm not saying what you think is going to happen this year. I'm talking about based on past production. Oh no, no, yeah, I could say no. Uh, Kenneth will go before it. What happens? So yeah, if Kenneth yeah. Murray Jr. has another hundred plus tackle season, but I don't know. Here's here's why I say I don't know because I, here's why I say I'm not sure about that. Because if Neville goes out there and runs a four seven in the combine at three hundred and five pounds, he ought to run faster. I mean, because he was supposed to be running four seven last year at three thirty five. He ought to run faster. So yeah, well he ran. He ought to be right. faster than Quentin Williams. So, if he runs a four six eight or something like that at three hundred five pounds, I'm telling you, they're going to go back and look at his film and go, "Wow, Oklahoma was using him wrong for so long." So yeah, I think he would draft a hit just because it's so hard to find a guy with his athletic ability. Well, let's, in the interior. Let's walk that out then. Let's say, I mean, because I'm I'm playing thought experiments here. Uh, let's say that Neville Gallimore. Got hurt, 
this year. Worst thing that can happen the year before you're supposed to go into the draft. And then you show up to the combine. Let's say you get an invite to the combine, which again, I'm not, I'm not sure he gets one unless he has a big season, like you say. Like, I don't see anything that would have him invited right now, even as we want him to be the linchpin on this defense. But let's say that he did. If he runs 4.68 and has a crappy shuttle and has a crappy everything but drills, right? Everything but what, what actually is, you know, defensive line play drills. I think you're right. I think he could go first four rounds, not first three, first four rounds. I think somebody would take a flyer if they don't take him early, early, early. Like a like a dude that you suddenly come off the board and you go, wait, what? What? <laughs> What, what did you see? Yeah, that happens every year, too. Yeah, like, I mean, and but has it happened to Oklahoma players? Well, I guess you could say it did. No, you can't. You can't. Marquise Brown was a was a mocked-up first-round draft pick. So, Well, um, Joe Mixon, nobody thought he was going to go second. second round? Yeah, nobody, yeah. remember? Yeah, because he, he's like, oh, he's going to go fourth, fifth round. Because yeah, and then, since he, and then since he made that hum, and he's, he's their number one back. So it can work, but also Joe had a really great last – season at oh, Oklahoma yeah. yes, and by really great I mean we were talking about whether or not Joe Mixon needed to be a Doug Walker winner yep you know uh he was fantastic yep and so when we talk about Gallimore are we gonna be having the same conversation I mean it's one thing to say he's gonna have a big year fine put numbers to it Brandon I mean nobody thought that uh Williams was gonna have the year he had at Alabama so I mean it happens I disagree like I keep Okay, we didn't because we don't cover that team. But I was actually at at 247 yesterday having this discussion with uh, one of the folks who works there and is very close to Alabama's program. And it was basically I know, you're talking about. <laughs> I know you know what I, who I'm talking about, but it was one of those things where the university was putting out nobody saw this coming, you know, because they had a different narrative going. But anybody that was apparently watching practice was like no, we've known that kid could play. It's about the kids in front of him and him sticking it out, and then we knew that he was going to be good, and we knew yeah. that we were going to be okay. Whether he played in or tackle, you just knew watching him play defensive line that he was going to make it hum. You didn't know that he was going to be you know, third overall draft pick or second, second overall back draft pick. Well, I mean, that's the same. But see what you're just saying. You're describing everything that we think of Neville. We all think he's I thought it last good. year, though. And I got burned by it. You got burned by it. We all did. Because they still used him the same way that they all Yeah, but it wasn't supposed to matter last year, remember? Man, it can't, it's got to matter. It's because we were that naive. And when I look back at it, I'm like going, how could we sit there and think? Nah, I remember what I... guy catching blocks is going to have a big year. I remember I remember what I thought. I thought that it was going to be a, uh, a, four, a, a one gap front with four down linemen. Or four men on the line of scrimmage, not four down linemen. I remember saying that out loud because that was we we'd seen some of it, right? And we'd heard rumbles of it in preseason camp. Yeah, and then it went back. And then he, <laughs> yeah, then it went back to twelve position, uh, twelve players for eleven positions. Yeah. You know that you got a nickel and a Sam. Get the hell out of here! What are you doing with a nickel and a Sam? You got a defensive tackle and a nose guard. What for? I'm with you, but see, that's what I'm saying. It screwed him over. Well, that's and that's kind of that's another reason why I'm saying I I want to see the defense. I'm I'm tired of saying. Well, we we watched we watched him run a one gap and it looked a lot better. Yeah, and Gallimore looked amazing in it. But I also and this is gonna get this can get touchy real quick. Levi Draper was the best spring ball player we saw in twenty eighteen. Yeah, you know, so like I don't and yes, Mike Stoops is a different defensive coordinator and Alex Grinch apparently has his eyes wide open and has who he thinks can play. Mm-hmm. And apparent and I hope I hope. We saw those dudes run with the first team in the spring game, so we have some idea of what it could be. They were without they were without probably 11, 11 guys on defense. Though. See, we were, and, and yeah. Neville Gallimore was eating the lunch of a bunch of guys that probably ain't going to be playing the same offensive line positions come preseason camp. Ooh. See? See? I don't know about the, that. Where I, was Creed Humphrey? I, he was the only dude. Where was he, though? He had a broken hand. Okay, and who was he lined up? Who was Neville Gallimore lined up across from? Uh, well, I can tell you. Redshirt freshman. Yeah. And Clayton Woods. Yeah. You know, like I, I. But we can't hate on Clayton Woods. No, no, but I, but I, 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 I do think so. it's fair to say that Clayton Woods ain't Creed Humphrey. 
I think that's 100% fair to say, but I also think it's fair to say that Clayton Woods is pretty good because he, it's not like he's like mush or anything. Like, he's a walk-on because he chose to be a walk-on, not anything else. Well, and uh, we can say that about a number of guys at Oklahoma. And, and yeah, Tanner Schaefer. Right, I mean, and you, you'd be right. I'm also just trying to, to, to level the heads of a lot of folks who look at what we do in covering recruiting and in covering the team and think that we're sunshine pumping. And I'm going, no, I like – No, we're I'm, not. We're I'm not. analytical. We're trying to be level about this. If, that's why, that's if, why I said I don't expect huge, huge jumps. But I expect marketed jumps where at least we see improvement. Well, I don't expect this defense to go, oh, my God, they're top 30 in the nation. Now. No, but, like, but, but, but a guy like Perry and Winfrey saying – I want to come to this school, and the way that he said I want to come to this school, right, wasn't the kind of guy – I mean, yes, you got offers, right, and Neville Gallimore took other visits, y- yes, um, and that's not to say Winfrey won't. Yeah, Neville but, chose OU during, during the time OU was dominant on defense. So. Right, so I'm talking – I'm thinking about him. I'm thinking about Winfrey, and I'm saying that dude just must like Oklahoma yeah. in a way that yeah. a lot of other recruits are looking for the best situation – and they're looking for the best place for them to develop and get to the league. And that's an ongoing discussion among fans, especially as two but dudes is that cover fair recruiting. Is it say that he's not going to be able to develop and get to Because I think he will. I no, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying him. is I, I, this kid, this kid no, is all about getting to let, the Let me finish the point. Let me finish the point. Okay. So the point that I was making was one that you and I agreed on, which was when you had kids from Oklahoma – playing for Oklahoma and they were the back br- backbone of what you made, OU's really, really good. And I think you can extend that conversation out to kids who just grow up saying, I want OU, or go into it and say, if OU offers me, I am committing. Brian Darby might be an example of this. Uh, Baker Mayfield is the most famous example of this. You know, and I, and yeah, I wonder, does, does, right, does Winfrey fall into that category for you? Yeah, I think he does. Um, but he's also so freakishly athletic and talented for a big guy. I mean, I I'm, I want people to understand what they got in this guy. Like, I mean, it. Like, you have a guy that, granted, he went JUCO, but it, I mean, if you watch his JUCO film, he is just bum rushing dudes. I mean, just tearing people up, and. He's fast. I mean, he's chasing dudes down from behind. He is not your normal defensive tackle. There, like I said earlier, there's a reason why Alabama won it. I mean, there is reasons. And well, there's a reason why are- Alabama won it. Miles Slusher in Oklahoma does not. Yeah, I said it. I'm ducking right now. <laughs> <I'm> ducking. <laughs> My man, my man. I'm all right, talking. all right. I'll get you I'm back talking. on course. I'm not going to comment on that. One. I, I'll get you back on course. All right, I'll because get you back you on know course. My stance on it too. So yeah, right. Well, I mean, I'm equal with you. So. I got a radio show where I talk about this stuff from 9/11 on Sports Animal in Tulsa. So everybody knows that I, I my mouth is wide and it's loud, and yeah. the Oklahoma kids can play. And that's not that's not me just coming from the state. Although that's you got to factor that in. Alabama offered him. This is not Brandon yeah, talking. This is me. Offer too. I, I asked around about that. So, so there, there you go. It's not a go to camp and earn it. It's a if you want to take it up, take it up. Yo. Anyway, I think that all of this LSU is, too. Oh my god. The, the the real DBU. Yeah. As as the dude on the Jim Thorpe Award Selection Committee, like they put out DBs. Yep. Greedy can play. Grant Delphic can play. They're going to be good this year. You know, I, I mean, you know what? You know how mad people would be if Miles Slusher decided to flip his commitment to Alabama and turn into Minka Fitzpatrick 2.0? Would, would, would this staff ever be able to live that down? I mean, all right, let me get off of this because now I'm, I'm really, I'm getting pissed. <laughs> Just thinking about the idea of what that could be, but if he if he flips from Oregon, I won't be shocked. Oh, there you go. All right. Do you want to say where? Nope. Okay. There you go. <laughs> but but I you know look, I always thought it was interesting that Oregon got Kayvon Thibodeau, and I didn't think they would. You know, this was the top 
if nothing else, defensive end in the country in 2018, and for many people, the best player in the country in 2018. And he ended up at Oregon. Shocking, right? What? It's shocking, right? Mm, Yeah. uh, Okay. I see where you're going. (laughs) I see where you're going. But I was trying to get – I was trying to say they're in on a lot of kids. (laughs) They they were – they were in on uh, DJ Ugalele, and they were in on Chris Steele both times. And, and you know, I just, I just think it's interesting. And I, and Mario mm-hmm. Cristobal, this is not shade. This is me, frankly, saying it. He learned how to recruit at Alabama. Okay, that was oh, another yeah. reason why you and I were really trying to and nail down you. whether or not he's Pete Goldie was man. the guy. Everybody forgets where he's from, and he's from when the U was good. Yeah, well, Ken Dorsey's from when the U was good. Yeah, but he doesn't have the – Cristobal's got that swag to him too. Cristobal's cri- – cri- well, uh, look, I, I, I'm not going to disagree with he that. He does. I'm not going to – I said I'm not going to disagree with that. And because that conference is watered down past Washington, yeah, make it the SEC West if you want to. I don't see a problem yeah. with that. I'm Go also – interested in how they nationally recruit because I mean they they catch a rep for how they go and get or don't go and get Oregon kids in the way that OU catches uh you know catches rep for not picking up some Oklahoma kids you think they should pick up. Now yep. all right so we're getting toward the the half hour mark here. So I'm gonna put this to you and then I think we gotta shut it down. Okay. I was asked on satellite radio who I thought would be the breakout player or the player that everybody's forgotten about and which play on the defense I thought everybody should keep their eye on. So the breakout player that I picked was Trajan Bridges. Uh Um, And then the player I I said everybody should watch to lead on the defense was a Gallimore, one Murray, though I do believe Murray is a captain and a leader, and uh, same thing with Kenneth Mann. I don't want that misunderstood. I do believe that a Trey Brown – can take away your number one, then you're talking about an elite defense and not just one that's, you know, middling to average. Yeah. Okay. That's so, a, those are two solids. So who would you say is the breakout player and who would you say is the one player on the defense that has to play well for them to be good? Not average, good. You, you took you took my offense, so... What do you mean um, I took your offense? I, I you said it. You, Trajan, you can say Trajan. Trajan. That's okay. Yeah, Trajan was the first person I would think of. Um, I will go with Braden Willis. Ooh, sexy, sexy. Yeah, well, uh, he's going to be the H-back and know what they do with the H-back there. So. What, Jeremiah Hall's like, hey, eat this run highlight from the spring game, Brandon. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll keep eating it and watch a six foot three. Yeah! can't do the run to four five. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. I think I think they're going to share time, but I think Braden's going to be the main guy as far as I go because they've they've they they rotated guys for a while at that position. They had several guys run it, but uh, you always have Flowers out there and as your main guy. And I think you're going to do the same this year with uh, Dimitri, not Dimitri, but with Braden Willis. So I think I expect him to have a pretty pretty good year uh, on the defense. I'm going to go with uh, Jalen Redman. I think. If it's a risky he's healthy, pick. if he's healthy, we saw in limited time last year what he could be, and it was special. So, I mean, he wreaked havoc against TCU, and and then he, he went, went down. out there. He had never played. He didn't hardly practice. And then they played him. Say what? I said you. You said he'd hardly practice, and then they played him, and then he went down. Uh, yep. It ain't KD, but you see where I'm going with this. You yeah. got to be real careful with him. And by real careful, I mean, hell, Golden State thought they were careful. He's got to be on play count to start. He does. And and, and, and every that. well, yeah, yeah. And it's good. And it, you don't need to know what that play count is, but no, you probably you probably should be transparent with everybody who's following this team and say that he's on a play count if that's what you're going to do. Yeah. So I think I think I think probably. I would expect him to be 20, 30 plays to start, and then game two, maybe 30, 40. You know? Just kind of work your way into it and see how it goes. Because if you don't, I think it's going to be a bigger risk than you really want. 
but if he gets out there and I think midseason he's playing 50, 60 snaps, I think that's perfect for him. And I think it's probably where you want to max him out year one. Um, and he could be a major problem because one, he's going to be, he's going to be fresh a lot because he's only playing 60 and he's really, really good. I mean, we saw it in the limited time, no practice goes in there, a sack when he forced a fumble um, and he had a tackle for loss. I mean, who does that? I mean, that's pretty impressive. Kevin Durant came off of 32 days absence. That's true. 11 points, 12 minutes, block, forced to travel out of Pascal Siakam and changed the NBA, as Brian Windhorst said. You know, so like, I'm just saying, I wouldn't even say 60. I would say give that kid 15, 20 snaps tops. Or, hey, we have a out-and-out pass rush down. I mean... Through the Ooh, first, through, like that. through the first six games, I think you you creep it up every game. That's why I said like fifteen, twenty the first game, and then kind of creep it up every every game. Okay, so let me put it this way: if you're trying to load him in in the way that you're proposing to load him in, and you overload him November 9th against Iowa State, and then you lose him. For Baylor, TCU, Oklahoma State, possibly Big 12 championship, possibly a college football playoff, what good did you do? Why would you not necessarily just want to go 15-20 through the first six games, see how it is, you know, let let the research, let He's going full go in all the workouts and stuff. That's going to be harder than a game. (sighs) He's going full go in the summer. I mean, you and I both know that going full go in the summer ain't going full go during the season, during preseason. Let me see if he makes it to preseason camp before we even uh, put yeah, a play no, count that's, on that's, it. That's the key. I think that's the key. You know, and, and how he makes it through preseason camp. Because we we know that that's the part of the year every year that they beat the hell out of these kids. Um, and that, I don't mean that, like, literally. I mean, they, they put them through their paces. Like, they make sure yeah. that they are ready to play. And they'll be tired and they'll be two-a-days and all that kind of stuff. As much as you can do two-a-days anymore anyway. I just think that I'm going to take baby steps with him all the way because getting one good game against TCU rather than have him healthy against Texas in the big 12 title game and have him healthy versus Alabama in the orange bowl. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. care about Houston. I don't even care about Texas, you know, because it's earlier in the year. I care about, can I have this kid when I need him in November, December? Yeah. You know? So like when I say 15, 20 I, I, through the first six games, I, I, I mean it. And I want him chopping at the bit. I want him frothing at the mouth. You know, I, I want to know without a shadow of a doubt from everybody that when we throw him out there, we don't need to worry anymore. It's, it's time. He's rested. He's ready to go. And now we have, for a lack of a better term, our heater, our closer, the guy you never thought to learn to think about for so long is eating your lunch. You know, Ronnie yeah. Perkins comes off the field, and then you find out Jalen Redmond is a monster. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm, I'm playing the chess game here. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, I, I think that I think he's probably more ready than we were giving him credit for. Okay. So okay, I do. I just think. I mean, I he was at the camp. I mean, he talked. I mean, he said he feels great. So we'll see. All right. Well, that is my man Brandon Drum bringing the goods. Read his work on OUinsider dot com. You can read my work at OUinsider dot com because surprise, surprise, the Young and Drum podcast is presented by OUinsider.com. Subscribe. Get on the VIP board where you can bug the hell out of me and you can read Drum's excellent work daily, always, Only every $1 day. $1 for the first month. There you go. Right yeah. there. You know, reach out to us on Twitter. Uh, say hi. Do all the stuff that people do. We will see you next week with another episode. Deuces.